ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் பேக் டு த சேனல் ஸோ இந்த ஏர்லியர் வீடியோஸ் வி டிட் லுக் அபவுட் த பேசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்கனாமி லைக் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்கனாமி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் கூட்ஸ் லைக் ப்ரைவேட் கூட்ஸ் பப்ளிக் கூட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஸ்டாப் அலாங் வித் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி காஸ்ட் ட்ரேட் ஆஃப்ஸ் வி ஆல் டெட் வித் கான்செப்ட்ஸ் விச் விச் வேர் ரிலேட்டட் டு மைக்ரோ எக்கனாமிக்ஸ் இன் திஸ் லெக்சர் வில் பி டீலிங் அபவுட் த மே பேசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் மைக்ரோ எக்கனாமிக்ஸ் you might all ask me what why microeconomics so we should all know that in the recent past upsc has been asking at least one or two questions with related to microeconomics and moreover it is better if we knew micro at least the basics of microeconomics uh, it will be helpful uh, with respect to macroeconomics too so let's get into the lecture in this lecture we'll be looking about what is microeconomics law of demand and supply law market equilibrium different types of goods and theory of firms so let's start with what is microeconomics microeconomics is a branch of study in social science which studies the implications of incentives and decisions and more specifically it shows how it affects the utilization and distribution of resources on an individual level like what it says is let's say you are in your house in your house people take decisions you also manage how the resources are allocated for different uh, processes such as production exchange and consumption so it also looks into the decision making of individuals in your house so this is something microeconomics does it deals with the smaller part of an economy okay if the same decision making uh all resources allocation is done at your city level or state level it is called meso economics and when it's done at the national level it is called macro economics so micro economics not also deals with the prices and production in one single market and the interaction between different markets okay it deals with prices let's say in like chennai or bangalore kolkata delhi it deals with the prices and production in one single market be it bangalore delhi or what wherever it may be and the interaction between different markets it also deals with the interaction between different markets like delhi and kolkata bangalore and delhi chennai and bangalore it deals with the interaction so that is something microeconomics does coming to the next point law of demand and law of supply it states that the other factors remaining constant other factors in the sense inflation proper mechanism proper market structures the price and quantity demanded of any goods or services are inversely related to each other like when the price of a good increases the demand for the product falls and when the price of the product decreases the demand for the good increases example we can say it as automobiles so when the price of automobile increases okay when the price of automobile increases people will try to find other sources of uh, travel eventually the demand for automobiles decreases but when the price of automobile decreases people will um, be uh, trying to purchase the automobiles thus the demand increases however it is only applicable to normal goods you might all ask me what are normal goods like isn't automobiles normal good yes of course it's a normal good but there are different types of good which we will be also dealing in the later slides of this lecture now let's look at the law of supply it states that other things being equal as the price of a good or service increases the quantity supplied of the good or service also increases and vice versa so it says that when the price increases quantity supplied also increases and the price decreases the quantity supplied also increases you might ask me how is this possible of course we we even see that daily in the market section when the price of onions increase 
farmers will be more incentivized towards the production of onions they would get the thought that onions give us more return so eventually more onions will be produced eventually price also increases supply also increases but when the price of onions decreases farmers will get the thought that onions do not give enough money so let us not produce onion but different uh, uh, vegetable or water maybe during those phase that phase price of onion also decreases supply of onion also decreases so this is something law of demand and law of supply do so hope you guys are clear with that now let us look into the market equilibrium it is nothing but quantity demand is equal to quantity supply it's very very simple quantity demand is equal to quantity supply however there are some exceptions i mean not exception there are certain things which happen like when the equilibrium is higher where it leads to excess supply okay excess supply the quantity supplied is high compared to the demand so what happens is let's say um, a textile producing factory produces thousands let's say a thousand shirts a thousand pants or whatever maybe okay it keeps one pant at a, at a price of 500 for sale so what happens is it, it has set the price above the equilibrium that is if the equilibrium price is 250 it has set at the 500 500 rupees uh equilibrium which is higher than the price it leads to it but it gives excess supply high quantity supplied to market then the demand required so what happens in this places so at the end of a certain time the company needs to sell all of its stock to produce new stocks but the equilibrium is higher so what it does is it must reduce the price bring it back to the equilibrium price so that is what we call stock clearance sale bait and various social online so I mean, online marketing platforms or even um, textile shop and many other um, shops that is called stock clearance sale and to clear their inventory they must reduce reduce the place and because of which people will buy they uh, people buy their products similarly setting the price below can cause excess demand if you are giving it freely okay more number of people will be coming to buy your products but you do not have the capacity to give to all the people so eventually to cut the demand you increase the price you put 5 rupees for a product eventually the demand increases and you can also give the product without any problem this is something market equilibrium says about now let us look into the different types of goods there are different types of goods which in the earlier lecture we dealt with public goods private goods and stuff in this lecture we'll be dealing with the six types of good in one by one in detail okay starting from substitute goods goods which can be used in place of for another for satisfaction of certain specific things so there are always alternative for that with respect to substitute goods for example when you are not able to find google chrome as a browser you can also use uh, mozilla firefox as a browser there is a substitute for google chrome so that is called a substitute goods complementary goods um, complement yes these are the goods which are used together to satisfy a specific want you need to use the together pencils and erasers you should use it how you no person will write 100% correct you need eraser to erase that because they are complementary pencils and erasers are complementary they go together next chiffon goods it is a low income non luxury products that defies the standard economic and consumer demand theory 
and the, there is where the demand rises when the prices for rise and falls when prices fall bread rice these are all called given goods because the demand rises prices also rise when the demand falls prices also falls that happens regularly uh, in our day to day life next is webblen goods these are the goods where the when the demand increases price also increases and it is something special actually because they are known as exclusive goods and are known as a status symbol example designer jewels luxury cars these are all considered as webblen goods the price of the goods increase as the demand also increases these are webblen goods normal goods normal goods are those goods for which demand rises as the consumer income rises so i am a consumer i earn some 100 rupees per week or per day so when i get 200 rupees even jolly i will search for some other product say let's say i am buying some amount of money i am using some basic phone when i get more income i will try to buy some i'll buy to buy an iphone so this is normal good the demand rises when the consumer income rises that is normal good inferior good it is the good whose demand decreases when consumer income rises simple see my income rises i am riding in the bicycle now as my income rises i am buying new two wheeler eventually uh, the value of my cycle goes down this is something inferior good says about demand decreases when the consumer income rises so hope you guys are good with the different types of goods coming on to the next let's look into the theories of firms there are four types perfect competition monopolistic competition oligopoly and monopoly the perfect competition it's numerous firms produce identical goods in perfect competition we are seeing this in our daily life like when you go to the market numerous people have the same vegetable say different same vegetable vendors numerous people are vegetable vendors so like there is a competition between each one of them to sell more vegetables to earn more in which uh, to more earn more income the most important part is that thing is no barriers are there for entry or exit you can sell the vegetable if you want today and leave and be on leave tomorrow if you don't want to in this firm producer and consumers possess perfect market knowledge like you know at least basic knowledge about what is the price of onion what is the price of tomato what is the price of brinjal etc etc next comes the monopolistic competition involves many producers using product differentiation to distinguish from others there are different products same products but with little differentiation from the others we can say taxi companies ola uber these are all taxi companies they have they are, they are the products of the market but they have differentiation among the others to know about this consumer awareness of this differentiation is essential and again barriers to entry or exit are typically lower compared to the oligopolistic markets next is oligopoly see here few influential producers dominate the market where duopoly is the most minimum form the producers have substantial knowledge about competitors action and can predict their response to the strategy changes these products you as we know they have very very complex differentiation where the price is influenced by large producers and for the barriers for entry is very high phone manufacturers you can say it as example samsung produces this type of phone iphone produces this type of phone LG produces this type of phone. Each one has their own differentiation, and each one has their own specification for staying in the market. 
and each uh, and there are only few influential producers in the market for producing phone next one is monopoly when single producer dominates the market there is no one right it may arise due to statutory statutory ownership or government ownership in this concept monopoly sets its own price and government regulation is common to control the monopoly power the monopoly concept can be seen in the socialist countries like china north korea where the government controls the monopoly by setting its own price so this is something a type of firm which is in the current global scenario functioning still so hope you guys understood the theory of firms four different types of firm so that will be for uh, today's lecture so hope you guys understood today's lecture on the basics of microeconomics uh, do like share and subscribe the channel and the video we'll come back with the next lecture soon thank you